Good morning, everybody. We got another Facebook Live event going for you today, Friday, April 26th. This lady right here, I'm pointing, I think, pointing to her correctly. It's right, a little yeah. funny in the Sorry. camera. Yeah, there she is. It is Our Lady of Good Counsel's Feast Day. So we are grateful to be able to have this time together to talk about a certain virtue that has captured Jason's yes. mind and heart here as of late. Well, yeah, praise God. So, um, <laughs> accidentally and not no, intentionally. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, it, one, I mean, set the kind of the context. Uh, we were doing uh, uh, Exodus 90. And uh, so there's a lot of stripping going on in, in Exodus 90, a lot of stripping from comforts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sugars, uh, sweets, treats, snacks, and desserts, uh, Facebook, uh, Netflix, things like that. And um, so in that process, you're trying, just trying to just draw holy, holy, closer to God, right? Holiness. You want, to, you want to draw closer to God. And I remember kind of thinking about it like, okay, I want to do this thing. I want to grow in my faith and I want to like excel up the mountain and just be with our Lord. And, uh, and then all of a sudden there was like this, like this, like stripping of, and hurt. And it was like, man, God, this is hurting me, Lord. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and I was reading this book as I got the flu during Exodus 90, never had the flu before in my life. I got ex uh, I go through Exodus 90, taking cold showers with the flu is very difficult. But, um, so I've, I've, I'm reading this book as I'm laid up in bed and, uh, it was, uh, it was on the three conversions of the spiritual life. Um, by uh, 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 Father Gerigou Lagrange, and uh, and he said uh, it was like this quick little line that the Lord uh, strips uh, before He enriches. Mm. And I was like, oh man. So okay, so but what's what was going on was um, at that time I remember going to confession. I was on a retreat in March. Um, we uh, we had there was a time where we had a lot of priests at, at, on the retreat, and a lot of the couples had already gone to confession. So I found a window and I was like, I need I need to go to confession. So I went to confession. And Father F from over at the Abbey. He was, uh, I'm, I'm sharing my confession with him. And I remember some of the things I, I struggle with, you know, patience, uh -huh. love is patient, love is kind, is not quick tempered, brew over injury and all that stuff like that. And things that I always come back to seem like I always say the same sins. I'm going to confession yeah. again, like, you know, I, I wasn't patient with my kids. I wasn't kind. I, I, I was brooding over injury and I, I raised my voice. I was yelling at them. And and um, and so anyway, and I was kind of sharing a bunch of stuff and and, uh, and he was kind of challenging me on on meekness. And he said, you know, our Lord was meek. And he said, you know, there was a, a verse, a Philippians chapter two, verse, uh, verse uh, six, like five through seven. You can really see that. He says, you know, he did not grasp equality with God, right? But emptied himself. Hmm. Um, so here, here's, he, he's, he's God, right? Jesus right. is God. He's got all right. this power. We just got finished with Holy Week. You saw what they did to him. Right. I mean, his friends are betraying him. He's. He's being ki uh, captured. He's being beaten. He's being scourged. He's being mocked. He's being spit upon. He's being crucified, and he's dead on the cross. Right? right. He has all this power. So, like, so anyway, Father Ephraim was kind of challenging me to kind of reflect on on this this point of meekness. So, okay, fast forward just a couple of days. I think maybe a day or two. I'm at the house. And we're trying to organize things around the house and, and take care of dishes. And, and I've got the kids, you know, Lee's and I, we've got the kids like doing the dishes all together right now at this point. And they're, they're all supposed to be working the kitchen, doing the dishes. I'm upstairs with the baby with the, well, she's not a baby anymore. She's five, but I'm trying to help her take a bath and you make her get all, get all, get her all ready for, um, for the nighttime routine, brushing the teeth and PJs and things like that. So I go downstairs um, to just kind of, I think I was grabbing something. I don't know what it was, like a cup to wash your hair out or something like that that wasn't in the bathroom. And I'm going downstairs. At the same time, I'm like trying to do a bunch of things. I'm brushing my teeth. And yeah. I got the mouth washing my mouth and I'm, I'm going downstairs. And the kitchen is a wreck. And they're sitting down about to watch a show on television. I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, I was like, guys, get back in the kitchen. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. calm down. Get back in the kitchen, guys. Do the dishes. Yeah. It's not done. Right. I take care of the kids. I take care of Nora. Go up. Go back downstairs. Kitchen's not done. They're watching the show. And I'm like, the kitchen's not done. And they're like, and they said to me like, no, no, we did. I'm like, and I, I drag them out. And then I, I, my daughter Sophia, I love her, and she, she kind of like uh, was trying to defend herself, which I, I don't blame her because she was trying to show me what she did do. And I'm like, no, look, I'm gonna show you what you didn't do. And I'm like pointing, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And I'm like, real like, like getting all. And I'm just like, I'm like really proving my point now. You yes. want to prove your point? I'll yeah. prove my point. And so um, that was kind of this moment where I'm just struggling with trying to like, you know, make my point. You got to clean the dishes and do all stuff like that. All right. Time goes by. I ended up doing the dishes. They were going to bed. It was late anyway. I was exhausted. 
And I did kind of like nudge Sophia. And I was like, Sophia, look, I'm, well, she's sleeping. I'm like, look, I'm, I'm really sorry. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have raised my voice like that. And I'm, I'm, I apologize. But I still kind of like the routine. That's what I normally do. Right? I kind of lose it. Take a, take a minute. I apologize. The, ne the next the next day, I'm listening to a talk by uh, Father uh, Rippin Rippinger, Rippinger, Father Rippinger, Chad Rippinger. Uh, Chad Rippinger. He he was giving this talk on how to raise a man, and he talked about effeminacy, and uh, and he talked about like being a man, and this uh, and and he said that um, the problem with effeminacy, effeminacy is not just necessarily like you know like men dressing like as women and being all uh, frou frou and stuff like that, but he says really it's it was Saint according to Saint Thomas Aquinas, he talked about effeminacy. Was uh, what was the he was gonna he he it was the uh, un, the willing an unwillingness to put aside one pleasures to do what is arduous and and quoting Saint Thomas Aquinas and they talk about like the difference between sloth he says that it's this aversion voiding what is hard that's sloth but in effeminacy you're avoiding because you're attached to the pleasure so there's this ability this inability of of a man to rise up past his his feelings of like what he wants and just kind of in the, the caught in the emotions of it. That's my point in the emotions. So father was in this presentation, talked about how like the man who shouts and is like yelling um, has lost control. And so he's no longer in, in control of himself. And he's, he's, a, he's showing signs of effeminacy. He's being this effeminate man who doesn't know how to control his emotions. That's interesting. I'm going to stop right there because Please. normally like you don't, think that you think then that oh, yeah. to yell and to be loud and to be more boisterous yes. is actually more masculine right and what you're saying is that it isn't right it's like the sparta like yeah. i am dead and i have power over you <laughs> and it was uh and it was not the case so the stories that you're showing sharon is that lose your anger with your kids oh yeah realize oh, yeah. that so i'm like getting like i, I sent the message i think it was uh father i think my, my brother-in-law father Bo, sent me that 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 message uh the the video the link to to watch it and i was like man that was a slap in the face a punch to the gut a knee to the groin and the kick in the pants like i just it was wrong like all like i needed to hear it right that so so before i could even get home i'm like sending a text message uh to sophia and i'm like Look, Sophia, I'm, I said, you know, I'm really sorry for for, uh, for the way that I did, the yeah, way I was acting yesterday. I was not being a, a father that was showing you the love of the father. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I sent a message to Elise and I apologized to Elise. I ended up apologizing to all the kids because they were in the house and I'm sure they heard my my, my boisterous um, uh, uh, arguments um, that that night. And and then, and, I, and then on top of that. So on top of that, that was that was that, and I'm I'm going to mass. The uh, two mornings later, I'm I'm at Saint Anselm, and I see my brother-in-law, a mother brother-in-law, yeah. Jean, and Jean's like, yeah, I was listening to this um, podcast by Father uh, John Ricardo, and he said, uh, or a video, something like that, and he said he talked about like meekness. He says the problem with meekness, he says, was that although it sounds like weakness, it has nothing to do with weakness. He said it's. He says, "You ever heard of uh, what it means to meek a horse?" I was like, "No." He says, "What it what it means is that that the horse has been trained, and so this this horse is able to be used in the field because he is in he knows how to to take the response of the of the master to to work in the field." Hmm. And I thought about you know like our work that we're called to be in this in the vineyard in our Lord's vineyard, yeah. and to be this servant for our Lord, to be an instrument in our Lord's hand. And here I am out of control. Right. Here I am flying off the right. seat of my pants at any kind of infraction or you disapproval of 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 or disobedience that I gotta come across and I've gotta like show, you know, you the right and and I'm realizing all the while that I'm undermining that point. Um, I'm and then I was and then fast forward to like that Saturday. I mean, this is all I it was the my week of meek. <laughs> that Saturday I'm talking to a group couple, uh, Arthur and Shirley Dupre. We, we met, they're like our mentor couple for Elise and I, and we're, we're kind of sharing some of these struggles. And, uh, and, and he talked about how, like, you know, that whenever you're, you're raising your, your voice at your kids, you know what happens? They, 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 they click, they, they tune you out. They can just sit there and just like, let you ramble and rant and frustrate all you want. And they're already gone. They're vi visually, they're looking at you, but they're just clocked out. And I'm like, dang it. Yeah. I've been here. I am like, lecturing them here i am like tuning them out and i'm i'm and i'm i'm missing something in in of an opportunity to help them and help myself to be an instrument to be meat 
And then even to the point where I even heard uh, 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 Jean sent me another podcast from uh, from Dr. Greg Popcheck and Lisa Popcheck, and they were talking about meekness, and they talked about how the original Greek word parous, uh, P-R-A-U-S in the Greek, was used to describe how you would um, train a uh, describe a, a, a horse trained for war, like to be able to uh, train this horse to be able to not be spooked in battle, but to be able to be um, uh, to be able to to respond to the rider's commands that this horse could then be brought into battle. And here I am, you know, being spooked or being frustrated at all these injustices all around me, yeah. but I'm, I'm not that war horse for the Lord that I'm not, not, it's not about, and that's the thing is not yeah, about like right. losing my strength and kind of like just giving up and just like whatever, but it's actually like having this strength, but being able to channel it in such a way that it is allowing the love of our Lord to come through the work, the words, and the actions that I'm I'm bringing out in this in the, in my family or wherever. That's a lot, man. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the week of meek certainly got yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're you're it. It's a hard virtue to understand because we often think yeah. of it as just being weak. Yeah, and that then being unbridled doormat. with my with my yeah. anger yeah. is a sign of masculinity or no. a sign of masculine strength. Like that's what, what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to yell. Right. I'm supposed to challenge. I'm supposed to be in you know in each other in, in my kid's face or in everybody else's face and I take no prisoners. Right. But that that isn't that isn't the strength that, that Jesus speaks with. No. I mean we think of the, the gospel, the story is is crazy. I mean it's yeah. like 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 God could have done anything. Yeah. But he allowed himself to die on the cross at mm. our hand at, at our at hands. hands right? At our hands. Right? Right. I mean he like he created us. Yeah. And he created all those Roman soldiers yeah. that nailed him to yeah. the cross. So he willingly allowed that to happen. Yeah. And it's such a, a contradiction and it's such a challenge for yeah. many people to a paradox, really, for many people to come to believe the faith. Yeah. Because it's like, well, if God, who was supposed to be the savior, did that, well, I mean, why? Right. And of course, the story ends, doesn't end on Good Friday. The story continues. No, that's that's right. where we're at today. We're, we're, in this, we're still within the Easter octave. That's right. As of the, this recording and recognizing then that it's because of Easter. I mean, that God harness the strength in a way yeah. that when it became unleashed, so to speak, was against yeah. the forces of hell. That's right. In 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 hell, that's where he descends and then he he rises yes. uh, from the dead to be able to take on new life. Yeah. So that 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 channeling yes. of energy, that battle yes. is still there. Yes. But it just looks very different than what yeah, we expected it, it to. It is, and and there's a, the misunderstanding of use of power and authority. I mean, even the disciples were were having confusions with that about like, well, who's the greatest? And and then he's got, Jesus got to like set the record straight. He's like, look, you the way that you think of authority and power, you thinking like the Gentiles do, mm -hmm. want to lord it over. But if you want to if you want to be the greatest, then you got to be the servant of all. Right. And uh, and and that's as as men as as husbands as fathers. That's that's our place. Like we're we're supposed to be the servant of servants in our family. Yeah. Like we're supposed to be the one who's serving, the one who's making the most more sacrifices. And we and and to be able to show that Christ like love in our home and our and to our children, to our to our spouses. But we can't do that if we're out of control. We're 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 not going to be an effective instrument in the field. We're not going to be that war horse because that war horse, like you're saying, like losing like by power or my strength, like those horses, man, they're they're strong, mm -hmm. right? They they haven't lost one ounce of spirit, one ounce of courage, one ounce of strength. In fact, that channeling that they're able to then have that ability to then focus in and then to respond to the to the rider's uh, calls and, and commands, like that's where I want to be because because he's the the rider God the the master has got a better plan has got a, has got the the strategy that I need to live out and carry out. The, the call that I've been given to win the bat, the win the victory. So the virtue of meekness then it corresponds to to anger or wrath, mm. in that wrath is not wrath is just that kind of letting go, that burning, right, unbridled. While meekness then is channeling that. Yes. The strength then it's like a laser. Then the strength is able to yeah. to go yeah. where it needs to go with precision, right, with accuracy. That's right. That's right. That's so right. losing your temper at your kids, which I laugh because. I, I know that story all too well. <laughs> and I've tried hard to grow my own version, yeah. my own sense of understanding of where, where the anger comes from. Yeah. The, and maybe this is getting a little more in the psychological, not necessarily in the spiritual, but Brene Brown, she would say that, that anger 
or lashing out like that is really just displaced hurt or displaced yes. blame. Like we're yeah. we're looking for somebody to blame. Right, right, right. And and often like we do that because we're American, I guess. I don't know. It's yeah. just it's just like something's wrong. We gotta blame somebody. So right, right. There's right. some problem, it's somebody's fault. Yeah. And that isn't always the case. It's yeah. just things sometimes don't work out. Yeah. We have to wrestle with that That's right. that humility within ourselves. That's right. To then be able to to be the the dad or the parent that yeah it's in in today. these struggles and these challenges like it's 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 God in these moments like pushing us forward as as, as Fulton Sheen talked about like in these struggles sometimes like in, in marriage and relationships we we kind of butt heads whatnot but like God allows these things to to push us forward to move us beyond the here and the now and to remind us of where we're headed and to and to not lose sight that like in fact that was another thing that arthur and shirley talked to us about was that like they talk about that in marriage prep they prep a lot of couples for for marriage and they said that a lot of times this anger comes out of like this like you're saying this misplaced you know whatever and it's like for them they talk they talked about frustrations and unmet expectations and it's like okay so there's it's it's not okay for me as a parent to then when i see the dishes not done to them for me to just blow up and go sparta on them but to be able to say and to, but not at the same time to say eh, you know what right it's okay it you know matter. i'll do right. it doesn't matter and although i ended up doing the dishes because it was very late in the evening but it was to the point where i needed to do something different there's another way that i can be that father who who can can guide and and educate and shepherd and lead and so train so if you could rewind teach. that evening what would that look what would that have looked like well, I would have probably, uh, yeah, calm the, the voice down uh, and I would have come in and, and maybe help them walk them through the steps of whatever their, their hang up was. Like what we ended up doing now is that instead of everybody kind of jumping into the kitchen and doing the dishes all together, I, I broke it into a group. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, they only have two at a time now and then they have their days and they rotate it. So then that way they're, they, because I think a lot of times too that they were like, how they were relating in the kitchen was that they see one person working, but then another person not working. Then there's like, there's an injustice because they're like, well, they're not working. So I'm not going to work. And then now they're, they're yeah, I don't get that. That's how my kids are. Also. And, and so like, so like, okay, I gotta, I want them to be able to have to work together. That's important. Right. Uh, but the point is, is that like in this situation, we kept running into this problem. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make it, I'm going to simplify things. You've got it these two days and then you got it these two days and then you got it these two days and, and we're just kind of rotating. And so, it's kind of managing the situation instead of like, again, reacting out of a unmet expectations. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be done and I asked you to do it. What's the problem, you know? And also not understand, uh, and my part, another problem for my part was not understanding why they weren't doing it. I think of a, a, my neighbor one time, uh, Fred Frazier, he said one time he was, he coaches uh, baseball and he does a great job. And he said, he says, I never yell at my kids. They said there was uh, playing baseball. He's never get mad, but they said one time I got, I got really upset with one of my kids uh, playing on the field. And um, he was supposed to slide and he didn't slide. And he kind of raised his voice. And then afterwards he brought the kids like, what happened? Like, why, why didn't you slide? And then uh, the boy said to, uh, to, to, to Fred, he said, um, to Fred, he said, uh, you never taught me how to slide. And it was like, oh man. And so yeah. I remember that, that, that story, like it, it's, it stuck me. Like there's a lot of times where I'm getting upset right. and really I'm, it's more, I should be more upset with myself for not, actually taking the time and and showing what it is that i'm asking them to do and if they don't know how to do it then figure out another way to teach them how to do it there's there's a variety of ways of teaching that you can do to help someone understand something and maybe the way that you've been doing it the way that i was doing it wasn't coming across and i needed to adjust my my teaching so weakness would be disregarding your strength and pretending like it's not there meekness is an honest recognition yeah. that your strength is there but knowing when to exercise yes it. yeah yeah and so yeah. yelling just for the sake of it and again i'm, I'm not perfect at this i'm really trying hard and I, I've, I've i've i honestly this has been a, a, a virtue i've tried to really cultivate in my own life over yeah. the last 10 years because the times that i have lost my temper with my kids or i've lost my cool with them i don't feel good on the other side oh no no never because i know do that i do that yeah. i know that i've i've, I've sent also right um, that also but I'm the one who is who, who has sinned and it's not their fault like right. usually they're not doing it intentionally to no, tick me no, off that's, you know? I know right, right. Like we, we, we like come back, up with like, all these like stories in our mind we're like they're plotting in the kitchen yeah, exactly. hey uh, we're gonna get dad really big this time we know exactly <laughs> what we need to do <laughs> yeah. to really get dad going yeah, yeah, you know? yeah exactly like, that's the narrative that we play in our yeah, head yeah. it's like oh yeah, no. like, come on guys so we can, right, like, let's right. get over it um, so meekness as Father Ricard said meekness is strength under control that's it beautiful Yeah. beautiful so a couple examples. Can we talk about movie-wise? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was, that was nothing. Because then I'm talking to Mario, 
And then uh, I'm telling, this was like the Friday of that week. And I was talking to Mario about, uh, about everything. And then he brings up um, Into the Spider-Verse, which I had just seen and I was blown away by it. But you brought up another great point of the father in there. Uh, so that, no spoilers, yes. no spoilers. No spoilers. It's a great movie. Fantastic. No, no, no spoilers. Yeah. Um, but the, there's a great relationship between the main character, Miles Morales, and his dad. Yes. Um, yes. And his dad is a police officer. And his dad's a big, big dude. Yeah, he's really got straight, double authority. Yeah. He's yeah. a police officer and the father. So the, for me, at big. least, the, the most tender scene in the movie is um, his dad is is meeting his son at the, the school. Is, uh, Miles goes to, uh, I guess it's kind of like a special a boarding, school, boarding right? school or something. So he's meeting at him there, and he's trying to reach out to him and have this beautiful, tender conversation. He hasn't him. seen him. He hasn't heard yes. from him. He's worried, right? He's really worried. In in he's in Miles, for whole sort of reasons is tied up in his room and is not able to respond to his dad yeah but the dad like could easily have just barged through the door and would have and, like, double authority yeah like, exactly. as a father and as a yeah as a police i'm worried i'm law, sick i haven't I, seen him yeah i say i'm gonna bust through this door yeah. i'm gonna get to my son i'm gonna talk to him i'm gonna tell him what's going on yeah but he doesn't he finally yeah. like lets it like realizes that he needs to be gentle he needs to give space for his son to to reach out to him mm. despite whatever is going on inside of him yeah and i think that scene is just so beautiful because like for us as parents mm. we get really frustrated with our kids when they don't know how to slide yeah or when they don't know what to do and sometimes it's because otherwise we haven't taught them or because we haven't given them enough time to really just kind of assimilate and learn yeah. what it is that they need to learn so that they can engage better you know the next yeah. time so that's a beautiful scene in that movie. Yeah. So when you, I mean, again, there were so many lessons, and that was another powerful one too, where, where Mario and I were talking about that in that scene because it was it was a great movie, super well done. But again, just seeing this authority, like again, going back to what Father Ephraim said, seeing this authority that that Christ has been given, and he didn't like, he didn't he he came about it a different way. He didn't bulldoze um, his love into the world like he he emptied himself, you know. And um, and in that was so much such great strength and uh, and it and it and and so hearing this again watching this movie and seeing this point where this this police officer and father has this ability to easily physically by the by his own strength by his own authority has the ability to open the door to get the door open but yet he chooses meekness um, and 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 that I think played great in the storyline between the two of them. Okay, so as we're bringing this to a close, yeah, where should people start? If somebody struggles with anger, yeah, how, yeah. how where can they begin to really cultivate? Well, one, I, 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 I can't stress the importance of a, of a good spiritual director. Uh, if you've read the book, Introduction to the Devout Life, uh, St. Francis de Sales hammers that point over and over again, the importance of a spiritual director. Uh, monthly confessions is always great. A daily examination of conscience, which is something that I'm trying to do a better job of, a nightly examine to kind of kind of see where how the day went and kind of see where you fell and kind of ask God for the grace. Because ultimately, this is a gift from God. Correct. So this is your yeah. prayer life uh, with your family, prayer life with your spouse if you're married, uh, a prayer life individually, making sure you have time for that. But also, uh, I would also add to it the, the beauty of Exodus 90 was was also the the fasting and the asceticisms that took place that during this time to kind of allow God to to um, move more intimately, I think, into my life, into my heart, into my mind to really make this point not just something that I knew, but something that I felt and I felt freedom. I, there's I, I'm I'm by the grace of God. I'm not, I know I'm not perfect, but since that 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 dishwashing explosion, um, that ha there has been a change. Um, and it's again, I'm not perfect, but I'm uh, there was a, a breakthrough that God did on me. Um, but it, I think that took a lot of time and uh, on patience, um, not on my part. I had to be open to it. So I think that's the thing is that the possibility that God can do this in your life, that whatever it is that you're struggling with, whatever there's there's a vice or a, um, a, a sin that you keep coming back to, that God can break through and give you that grace that you need. But you we have to be open to it and we have to be docile. So we have to be attentive to what he's teaching us, do the things that he's asking us to do and being filled and fed by his love and by his graces and prayer and the sacraments. Amen. And be patient with yourself is oh, the other yeah. thing. Because yeah. if you have a, if this is your vice, if anger is and wrath is the vice that you really struggle with, yeah. as you're taking steps forward, mm -hmm. you're going to mess up. There's going to be yeah. moments where you're going to lose your temper again and try not yeah. to let all that shame yeah. and criticism yeah. and doubt, all of that stuff kind of come back. You have to recognize That's that right. you're just trying to move forward right. against it. And then yeah. over time, 
you'll see that you'll you'll kind of get and I, and I told that. I told Elise too, and that's the beautiful thing about marriage is that you have a helpmate, not like not just to like to help you do the dishes, but to like help you spiritually to reach heaven because that's the goal of marriage, right? To get to heaven, and so to kind of give your spouse permission to call you out if you need to. And maybe in a loving way, and that's a gentle move that you got to make. But to be able to to find that way that your spouse can kind of see um, when those moments are, and how to make sure that if there's a tendency that in these moments you kind of escalate towards this explosion, maybe your spouse can kind of pick up those cues, and maybe you can be aware of and kind of find a way to kind of get out of that that same kind of habit where you think that you offloading shouting, yelling is going to be the most effective parenting method out there, which is not. Again, meekness is is having, um, what, what was it? The uh, strength under control. So if That's we it. want to be strong men for, for our Lord, if we want to be strong in, 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 in our life, then we need to be in control. And that control is possible only through the grace of God. Um, Amen. Praise God. Well, bringing this thing to a close. Yeah. Thank you guys for being with us and watching this video. Next weekend, May 4th and 5th, we have a married couples retreat yes. coming up. Uh, so please come yeah. and join us if you need a retreat to get away and yeah. connect with your spouse. Check us out on our Facebook pages. We got them linked down below. I just put up right before this uh, my little spoiler-free review on Avengers Endgame, which I nice. saw last night. Nice. And I'm still thinking about that <laughs> So you can check that out as well as well as Jason's uh, At The Heart YouTube page. We got a bunch of great stuff kind of happening. So stay connected with us at faithinmarriage.org. Thank you for being with us. And God bless, guys. Have a great weekend. God bless.